Before you say anything, I want you to listen to me for he one minute. He stole my, my truck, and I busted his with this. Is he telling the truth? <laughs> Case is dismissed. But you have certain rights. Oh, wow. I know this. Is there anything you wish to say? That light was red. You went you went right through that. Have a big date or something? You're going to get this. If you keep it up, right? This is Court in Providence. Patricia Polanco. This is summons number 1640964220. Prison Valley Parkway and Valley Street. Okay, lights, please. Wow, is that you? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, let's look once more. The light is green, it's yellow, and she changes lanes and. I didn't have time to break. I was going to hit the car in front of me if I didn't go to the next lane. I beg your pardon? If I didn't go to the next lane, I was scared that I was going to hit the car in front of me. The fact of the matter is that she's approaching the light. She's going too fast. And that's why she can't stop, you know. And, but if she was going at the, at the regular speed, she would have had plenty of time to stop and slow down. The light turned yellow. You weren't going to hit the car in front of you. You just were in a hurry. That too, because my I had to bring my daughter to school. No, you were in a hurry. He wasn't going to hit the car in front of you. Listen, well, listen. Here's what you said. You know what you just said? You said, "Listen, I was going so fast, right, that I would hit the car in front of me, right, under those circumstances." The light was turning red. I saw it. You saw the lane you met, and you went through the light. I mean, it's not a crime of moral turpitude. You went through a light. <laughs> and I avoided hitting the car in front of me as well, which I was trying to avoid. This isn't our first rodeo, you know. All right. $85. Amanda Gonzalez. This is summons number 1640964286. North Main and Branch on April 27th. Good morning. Your name? I'm Shirley Egan. My sister's Amanda. I was driving. You were driving? Yes. All right, we're going to take a look at it. Can we do it? Can I see this again, please? Which is this the right or the right left hand side? The left. Left? Was that her just making the turn? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Lights, please. And your first name? Shirley. Shirley. Okay. Okay. What do you want to tell me about this, Shirley? You want to tell me it's Amanda's fault? No. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the beggar's fault. On every one of these, you see a beggar standing there. And it distracts you from the light. And when the light turned green to go straight, I seen the green and I took the left. It's like every single corner you see beggars. And it's like they stress you out so bad you don't pay attention. Oh. Were you intimidated at all? She was intimidated? Oh, you're trying to counsel no, her. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, you're Amanda. Yes. It's your car. Yes. And she had the car with your authority. She yes. Didn't, she didn't steal the car. No. <laughs> no, but she was intimidated. All right. She don't know how to tell them no. She don't. She don't know how to tell who no, the panhandlers? The biggest, yeah. Oh. It's illegal for them. Do you agree with what she said? I do. I have a hard time saying no. Oh. I need a hundred bucks. <laughs> I don't have it, but I'd hope oh. if I had it. She passed that one pretty quick. Oh, okay. I don't have it. <laughs> oh, if you had it, you'd give it to me? I probably would. <laughs> probably would? How about 50? I don't have it. You don't have anything. I'm broke. My daughter and my grandchildren already got me. <laughs> I have two autistic grandchildren. They get everything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had the difficulty with that particular intersection with some people who are intimidated and are distracted by uh, individuals who, who are there. And I have I have usually given the motorist the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to do the same with you. Thank uh, you. Is there a way case. you can put a police officer to make them people? I mean, it's illegal, isn't it? I'm going to tell you a story, right? Once you win your case, don't say anything else. OK. Because if you keep talking, you're going to talk me out of dismissing the case. You want to, anything else you want to tell me? No. Thank no. you, Your OK. Honor. Next, I'm caught in Providence. Sir, do you understand English? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I explained through the interpreter, Your Honor. He wants me to tell you that my late grandmother is your wife's cousin. <laughs> <clears throat> There's much more caught in Providence ahead. Looking for more caught in Providence? Catch us on the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube, and the Instagram. And tell us what you think. This is Caught in Providence. Christian Cordonis. Cardonis is charged with an open container of an alcoholic beverage. How does he plead? Uh, no contest, Your Honor. It's an uneventful arrest. He was drinking a bottle of Coors beer. The police officer brought it to his attention. He started laughing at the police officer. It's not a good idea to laugh at police officers. At any rate, we spent the night in jail. Inspector Quinn, what's your recommendation? Your Honor, the recommendation is a three-month filing with a $35 court cost. Counsel, have you explained this uh, disposition to your, your client? Yes, I have, he Your agrees Honor. with it? Yes. Sir, do you understand English? No. <laughs> I, I explained through the interpreter, Your Honor. You understood that pretty good. Sometimes the judge, I believe, is the best English teacher in the world. People come in, don't speak English, they leave here, Speaking it fluently. You've heard the mic. Ask him if he understands that the matter is going to be filed for three months. Que si entiendes que el caso va a dar un seguimiento de tres meses. Yes, he does. Ask him if he understands that if he has any police contact in the next three months, right, that this matter will be reactivated. Si tienes algún contacto con la policía en esos tres meses, el caso va a ser reactivado. Correct. Yes. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Hay algo más que quiera decirle al juez? No. No. Matters continue for a period of three months. If there's no further police contact, the matter will be dismissed. Chelsea Lorenza. Good morning. Chelsea, you have a red light violation on Plainfield and Bacasset. <clears throat> All right, on the date in question, the car was indeed at Plainfield Auto Sales. Chelsea, uh, if you read the summons, you know, if, if you had indicated that on the, on the rear of the summons, then we would have sent the summons to the person that you indicated, you know. I had actually called and they had told me just show the receipt in court. I'm not gonna hold you responsible for it. Thank you. Read the rear of the summons from now on. He wants me to tell you that my late grandmother is your wife's cousin. <laughs> <clears throat> I have a conflict here, $85. Nicole DaCosta. Good morning, sir. Nicole, you have a red light on Roger Williams Avenue and Elmwood Avenue. This is summons number 164096. 43031. Lights? What do you want to tell me about this? You're whispering, I can't I hear you. Stopped. You think you stopped? You do? How I fast was she down. going when she made the turn? 16. Slow down. 16 miles an hour. You, you, you consider that stopped? Slow down. Oh, you slowed down. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. But you, you didn't stop, you have to stop. All right, it's $85. Coming up on Court and Providence. Okay, what do you want to tell me about this? I actually want to tell you that the white car behind me is my ex-husband's girlfriend, and I have a restraining order against her from back in September. 
It's the one of the is, anomalies they never thought of when the plant came out, and I don't know why they just. The house is in Cranston, the streets in Providence. That is correct. And, if, <laughs> and I hadn't seen you in a few years, so that says something. <laughs> <laughs> There's more straight ahead. Now back to the judge and court in Providence. Samina Simone. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning. You'd like the big gavel, by the way, this one. Yeah? Yeah. Come up here. Brayden, go up there, honey. Go to the judge. Go over there. This way. Go over there, my friend. Take your time. What is your name? Brayden. You want the small gavel? Oh, you don't want this one? No, okay. He wants the small gavel. Sorry. Mind if I put him in my lap? Not at all. He's gonna take your job. Quite a bit of the people come in and they'll, uh, they'll realize that it's Judge Caprio's day and then they start putting it together two and two that the show's on and, and then they start getting a, a, a little giddy or they start uh, or start going the other way where they start getting real nervous and the excuse they were going to give now all of a sudden might not sound as good as they practiced on the way in, you know? Bang the gavel. His all father's right. an attorney. His father's an attorney? Yes. Oh. You want to be an attorney someday? No. <laughs> all right, you can go down and help your mom. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Okay, this is summons number 164096, 43737. I'm the one with the sign on the window. <laughs> I mean, she was the uh, SUV, Inspector Quinn? That's right. Weiss, please. Okay, what do you want to tell me about this? I actually want to tell you that the white car behind me is my ex-husband's girlfriend and I have a restraining order against her from back in September of last year, and she was behind you, me. My, you have something you want to show me? Yeah, it's the restraining order against her, and um, I'm really nervous. Um, she was behind me, and she was honking her car, um, her horn, but that's not her car, so when I looked up and I seen that it was her, I got nervous with him in the car, and so I just went because I, I, <laughs> I was just nervous. I don't want a confrontation with her. I came to the police station after that. I came here. Yes. And I told them that she was harassing me, but they said that I didn't have any proof, so there was nothing they could do. You have a parking ticket on Benefit Street. Yes, um, that's for Thursday. and. Um, I, my mother was in the car, she's handicapped, and she, we have a handicap plate, so I was gonna bring the proof of her handicap. No, 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 we can't play that right now. No, not right now. Well, handicap. Uh... Yeah, so we were parked where it says you can't park those minutes, those hours. Brayden, go outside. Oh, just let him be, it doesn't bother us. You gonna let him play the game? Okay. Um, anyway, there's a handicap sign there, a couple of handicap spots, and my mother was coming to court with me, and we parked on the next spot over because she can't walk very far, and um, they gave us a ticket. Does so. she have a handicap certificate? Yes. Was it displayed? I'm sorry? Was it displayed on the mirror? Yes, yes. <laughs> the matter is dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. There's more straight ahead. And I hadn't seen you in a few years, so that says something. <laughs> 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 
let's assume somebody told you that. And then you got a ticket at 4 o'clock. And then you got a second ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a third ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a fourth ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a fifth ticket at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Like, when was it going to dawn upon you that you couldn't park? Well, the parking situation over there is a bit confusing because they have two-hour parking, three-hour parking, four-hour paid parking, not parking between 8 and 10, parking all the time, and it's a musical chair. There's a whole lot more right around the bend. Watching Caught in Providence. Kawita Miller. You have a parking ticket on 6th Street. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Yes, I do have a parking ticket because that day on the 27th, I had to go to Mariam Hospital and I was admitted that day. But before I went into, before I parked on 6th Street, I was circling the parking lot and they had no parking. So I had to park on the street and there was no sign. So I parked there. I didn't know that I'd be admitted into the hospital. And the reason for the delay is because I was in the hospital for five days. And then after that, when I left the hospital, I went right to Chelsea Everett because my father was in the hospital. Um, on life support, which is why I wound up in the hospital because I was stressed out behind him. So I went right to the hospital, to Everett, when I got out of the hospital, and I totally forgot about the ticket, and then I tried to ask my son to try to take care of it, and he did, but it was too late, so he was told that I had to come here. And I do have documentation stating that I was in the hospital to show you, just in case you don't believe me. And I hadn't seen you in a few years, so that says something. <laughs> yeah, you uh, were a regular down here. I was at one time, more, yeah, for parking tickets, but I've been very good. All right. You parked the car, you went to the hospital, then you got admitted, and then you got an overtime parking ticket. So mm -hmm. that is dismissed. Thank you. Marilyn have a great Gomez. Day. You have a parking ticket on Sinclair oh. Avenue, Marilyn. Yes, I uh, live on the Cranston side of Sinclair Avenue, but I was ticketed by a Providence police. I've called before, and they've usually taken care of me. You it. live in Cranston? Yes. And you were parked in front of your house? Yes. Uh, it's Providence and the others. The house is in Providence. The whole street is Providence. The house is... In Cranston. Correct. On one half of it. It's... One the of the anomalies in, they never thought of when the plant came out, and I don't know why they just... The house is in Cranston, the street's in Providence. That is correct. And and <laughs> I've just explained it to the, to the motorists and also to the court, Your Honor. That's, that's an issue that it's up to them to try to figure out on it, uh, traffic engineering. Well, I figured that I'm going to dismiss yeah, the correct. ticket. So can I get a permit to park there from Providence, or we can't? No, that's what I was just explaining to you. There are houses that are located in the city of Cranston where you pay your taxes and everything to Cranston. Your registration says Cranston. Mm -hmm. The street that you park on is Providence, the way the landline goes. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to repair it. If I did, we would have fixed it. Well, that's why I get the big bucks. I have to solve these problems. Case, <laughs> right? Case is dismissed. Thank you. All right. In this case, the city got it wrong. It happens. Natasia Burgess, you have six parking tickets. Is there anything you want to tell me about these? Um, I went through this last year with parking on my street. I was told that we're not allowed to park between the hours of two and four, and those um, tickets were given a little bit after four, and I guess the law changed. You were told by whom? When I came to the judge last year, no. one of the judges, no, between nobody two told and you four. four so it's, so it's for two and five, Judge. Yeah. Before it used to be one and six. They changed it to two and five. Yeah. But when did they change it? I'm saying it was changed and I didn't know that. I was told when I came to court for those tickets in the past. It never was four o'clock. Then why would it? It used to be one to six. It now it was two. It one in the morning to six in the morning. Well, then the they dropped it to two to five. The configuration of provinces, you know, that our streets are narrow. You know, we were, we were founded in 1636. We are not a new city with a grid. Uh, roadway. So it's very difficult and I'm sensitive to that. 
Let's assume somebody told you that. And then you got a ticket at 4 o'clock. And then you got a second ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a third ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a fourth ticket at 4 o'clock. And then a fifth ticket at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Like, when was it going to dawn upon you that you couldn't park? Well, I was going to, I didn't have time to come into court after those times that I got those tickets. So I assumed that when I came in, they were going to be dropped, dismissed, just like last year. Okay, it's $120. Yara Contreras. It was a terrible day for me. Um, you want to see it? My, my brother died that day, so right. I was not mentally okay. All right, I'm going I'm to charge you $30 for the parking ticket, so it's going to be $115. Chintin Modi. You have two parking tickets, sir. Good morning, Honor. What do you want to tell me about this? Uh, yeah, I actually i am a fellow at uh, Brown, and I work over there uh, on Brown Street and meeting. And, uh, uh, well, the parking situation over there is a bit confusing because they have two-hour parking, three-hour parking, four-hour paid parking, not parking between 8 and 10, parking all the time. And it's a musical chair. And I've, if I'm doing experiments uh, at a couple of times, I've just kind of missed uh, going there. And the, the enforcer over there is, does not show any mercy. We do have some very fast parking enforcement officers. I, uh, I once suggested that uh, maybe the two top sneaker manufacturers should have a contest with Providence wearing one and uh, someone from other municipalities wearing other sneakers, and Providence would win every time, I guarantee you. Right. It's $40. Thank you, Your Honor. Alexis Kwesi. Kwesi? Good morning, sir. You have two red light violations, one on North Main Street, the other on Admiral Street. Uh, this, this is my mother's vehicle. She's away at a funeral right now, so. All right, so Marlene is your mom? Yes. All right. D does she want to come back on another day, or you want to pay the tickets? I'll just pay it, I guess, because I don't know when she's, she's out of the country, so I she bought a one-way ticket. I don't know when she's coming back. Okay, it's $170. All right. Judge, you're the man. I just want to say you're doing a fabulous job, and uh, keep up the good work. Later. <laughs> Mr. Caprio, you are a human being. This is Miss Brown, and uh, this is my first time seeing a uh, life production, and I think Judge Caprio is very fair and very pleasant person to look at behind the bench. I think Judge Cabrio is fair. It's the first time I've awarded this program, and I think he's just a marvelous man. More people like him should be in the city. I'm Frank O'Donnell. Tune in next week. And until then, don't get caught in Providence.